don't you hate it when you start recording and then you make a mistake and have to start over again yeah that's me today this is like my fifth attempt at this video <laughs> so anyway um again i'm getting lots of cool stuff from y'all so thank you we're talking about leadership yet again okay so a celebrity or influencer gets paid influencer gets paid to sell you a product that they don't use and it's fine a friend gets paid to sell product they actually use and love and it's a scam yes it is especially when you're recruiting said friends to sell the same product that you're selling it's a scam. It's a pyramid scheme. What is a pyramid scheme? It's where you have to recruit people to make money. Yeah, that's the definition of a pyramid scheme. Stay with me, folks. What's the definition of a pyramid scheme? And it doesn't matter if you have a fucking product that you're selling, okay? The point of the matter is this. You are making money off of people purchasing things from the company. That's the pyramid scheme. You are recruiting people. How many people did you recruit last month? 10, 66, 75, 30? I don't know. How many people did you recruit last month? A lot, okay? More than most reasonable people should. But, you know, we're, we're talking about leadership right now. Yeah. So uh, let's, let's talk about leadership for a second. Okay, so let me pause, pull up a thing, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm going to lead by example here. This says, check out Colt's necklace. It just arrived on upholstering. It's super adjustable for your littles. Comments sold below to snag yours. So she is uh, exploiting her children to sell jewelry to you. Her downline. It is exploitation. Um, it's just like people who exploit other things to sell jewelry. It's sick. Just saying. Okay, pausing again. All right. This is a post from Training with the Rock Stars or something along those lines. This is another post that was sent to me. Could anyone help me? That's what it says. Could anyone help me? I was wondering how y'all organize pegboard. Since this is all I've got, since I haven't been doing this very long, maybe two years. That's a long time, honey. Not very long. Not very long. I've only been doing this for two years. And I'm building up my inventory and business items. Uh, but I'm getting so aggravated on how to put these. I got lots more, and like the bottom, it's in sets. Um, I just need help. It just looks all scattered. Okay, how do you all keep track of your customers' orders? Do you just write the name down and the pieces they got, or just write their name down and the number of pieces they got? I mean, she says she does lives. She does them in her in-law's house. So, Jasmine, I'm going to answer your question directly, and I'm sorry you heard Ellie. She's eating her her dinner. So, Ellie's going king, 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 king right now. Jasmine, when I went live, my pegboard was used to uh, set up the stuff I was going to show on that live sale during that day. Second thing, I kept little plastic bins that I got from the dollar store. I now use them to organize other things, but... I use the little plastic bins. I would put a post-it note in the bin with the person's name, and then when they when they commented that they wanted something or they bought something, I would place it in that bin, and I would have bins on the floor next to me as I went live. Okay, then I would send out an invoice from uh, when I first got started from PayPal. But when I got my Shopify store, I would just put all the items in their order into an invoice and I would inv invoice them through my Shopify. And I would make sure that my shipping was calculated correctly with my shipping and handling charges for my labels and my bubble mailers before I sent the invoice. Okay? That is how I did that. That's because I only had two pegboards and it was a foldable one to travel, which I never used to travel with. But anyway, that's what I did. Otherwise, all of my inventory stayed in the original double-wrapped packages. Um, and, yeah, they were, they were just in double-wrapped packages in my little, 
Oh, what am I trying to think of? My little Sterilite drawers and tubs. That's what. That's how I stored all my inventory. All right, David's doing dishes, so I'm going to pause real quick. All right, now these are some of the responses to her her request. These are what people posted under her thing saying, this is how I organize my pegboards. That is a lot of inventory on that wall of unrealized profits. And a lot of it that's sitting on that wall is stuff I had in my store years and years ago. And I'm seeing stuff that is, you know, it's just old. It's vintage, but it's old, okay? And then we've got someone who has a bunch of peg hooks with earrings and stuff. Oh my gosh, that is a lot of profit on that wall. Wow. No, it's not profit yet, it's just expense. Yeah. Then we have another person. She's showing off all of her earrings. And she has a little box with peg hooks in it. Does she lock this box? But this is all heart stuff. So she's obviously changing it to heart stuff. Now look at this. This makes me sick. She even got the plastic hanger things like that Walmart has. What she do? Go into a Walmart and steal the sock stickers? I mean, because that's what I'm kind of gathering from this vibe here is the sock hanging up stickers. But she has everything hung up sideways. And I just, oh, it makes me sick to see all of this. Yeah. Especially since then, you know, they're putting in real effort. Yeah, they're putting in effort, but it's still, that's, that's a, got to be over a thousand dollars just on that one pegboard alone and she has two three three pegboards plus shelves of inventory behind her that's gross well what i'm saying is um right when they don't make a profit it's still gonna they're still gonna get lambasted for not hustling enough or not trying enough or not getting putting themselves out there enough right yeah because that's always what they say it's your fault you didn't make you know you're not you're, you're not putting your all into it. That's why you're not making a profit. Like, dude, look at all the effort they put into their pegboards. This person is trying. They're putting in the effort. And to that, I'm going to bring up the narcissist prayer. This is something David told me about today because we were, we were watching CC Suarez's uh, video about um, her Cartagena, Colombia bullshit thing. Anyway, the narcissist prayer. That didn't happen. And if it did, it wasn't that bad. And if it was, that's not a big deal. And if it is, that's not my fault. And if it was, I didn't mean it. And if you did, you deserved it. The narcissist prayer beautifully illustrates the inner workings of a narcissistic mind. Gaslighting, uh, minimizing poor, beha poor behavior, Blame shifting and shame dumping all feature in this one simple verse. All hallmarks of a, a covert emotional abuse. To narcissists, the truth is not, it's not be, to be seen as finite, fixed entity, but as being malleable. Okay, so let's take a look, closer look. So I'm, I'm going to go back to paparazzi convention here, where people got sick after they came home from convention and died. All right, they lost their lives. Now, paparazzi is in denial about this fact, and they claim that that didn't happen. So the denial of paparazzi mixed in with history being rewritten, okay? And that was the thing. Um, there was a paparazzi convention called Unwritten. They should really have a convention instead of made for more. It should be called rewritten. Um, both classic and narcissistic behaviors. If you've been in a narcissistic relationship, you'll recogni recognize this instantly. Narcissists feel the need to feel good about themselves. This is an essential part of the personality disorder. They have a desperate need to feel special or perfect in order to distract themselves from their core wound, which is an underlining feeling of worthlessness. They can't accept blame for bad behavior as if it would challenge the image that they would need to project to the world, so they simply deny their bad behavior. 
Every single upline elite denies their bad behavior. And what do I mean by that? Well, they will deny that they told you to inventory load. They will deny that they did challenges to encourage you to buy jewelry. Hmm. They will deny that they ever encouraged you, a consultant, into buying stuff that you couldn't possibly, realistically, reasonably sell. Okay? They deny that all the time. It didn't happen. They didn't tell you to do that. Really. They never told you to buy 20 pieces of an infinity bracelet that was a black diamond Melissa McCure's Encore bring back piece that sold out in three minutes on the paparazzi website. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. We didn't tell you to inventory load. No, but I said, you pick the prize. If you order 20, you'll get an, a drawing on the wheel. And then you can pick the prize up to $75. I'm at least impressed that for 20 pieces, it only costs $50, $55 plus tax and shipping for 20 pieces. But you know damn well that everybody in your downline bought more than 20 of that stupid bracelet. Okay? You know damn well that that happened. So, back to the narcissist prayer, part two. And if it did, it wasn't that bad. Okay, um, min minimalization of this, okay? It's another tactic. It's hardwired into the uh, miswired narcissistic brain as a result of how they reacted to their upbringing. Here they diminish the topic concern to make it seem unimportant. And to a narcissist, if it doesn't serve them, it's unimportant. Narcissists will minimize all manners of all things from their own bad behavior to another's achievements to ill person's symptoms to someone else's problems. Okay, here's the someone else's problem that I'm talking about. Everybody who has sent me their email telling me their story that they quit paparazzi and they have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of pieces of inventory left in their home because they were encouraged by their narcissistic uplines to buy jewelry, either via the power of 15 or through contests to win an iPad or to win a crown. All of the prizes that these upline elites are offering to make you feel special and included, well, it, if, it wasn't, if, it, if it happened, it wasn't that bad. You won a crown. You inventory loaded. You got the iPad. You inventory loaded, but I piece matched you. You inventory loaded. It's not my fault you bought all that. I told you to only buy what you could realistically sell. Yeah, this is the gaslighting part, okay? But they're trying to control how others see the external situations. Erica Cole goes on her group all the time and says, only buy what you can realistically sell. Okay, uh, what can you, star consultant, regular consultant, what can you realistically sell in a month? Realistically, I want to know. Leave a comment down below. I want to know what your average sales were each month. Were you able to sell 3,400 pieces in one month? Were you able to sell 864 pieces a week? Because according to Crystal Lee Roberts Mitchell, to be a six-figure earner in sales and sales only, she has to sell 864 pieces each week. Okay? And for you to be Black Diamond... Uh, life of the party, you have to sell 3,400 pieces each month, according to her. So it's a 75,000 PV, so 75,000, i got to clear this out, uh, divided by 2. So that's 3,700, 37,500, so divide by 12. So yeah, you have to sell approximately 3,125 pieces per month. To, to reach that with realistic sales. I want to know, out of everyone who is a former paparazzi consultant that watches my channel, I want to know how many of you sold 500 pieces a month, 864 pieces a month, 3,400 pieces a month, outside of an elite, just regular star consultant, director, or, you know, whatever, if you're not considered the top 1%, 
how many of us realistically realistically sold 800 pieces or more per each month? Not me. But I bought more than 800 pieces a month. David? That's sad. Yeah, I know. And it shouldn't count selling to your downline. Yeah, and oh yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't. And you can't count the sales you make to your direct downline. That that can't be counted. Because that's eh. just straight screwing them over. That's straight pyramid within a pyramid and what David said, screwing them over. All right. So here's the next part of the narcissistic prayer. And if it was, that's not a big deal. Okay, of course, this is minimalization again. But here I want to mention the idea of gaslighting. This happens all the time in multi-level marketing. It happens all the time in cults. You are gaslit from a specific behavior in which the narcissist denies another person's reality. Well, they love to deny the reality of a star consultant. And by denying that reality, what they're really saying to you in that denial is, well, you're just not working your business hard enough. You're, you're, not, you're not taking the things I'm telling you to do and implementing them. You're not working your business. You're not taking it seriously. You're not taking it seriously. They will turn it on its head and blame you every single time. Um, just like the girl who was like, what do I do? How do I set up my pegboard? She's trying really hard to work her business. But I'm pretty sure not one person in her upline is going to give her a suggestion to help her work her business. Just like they don't do trainings on selling the product. They don't do challenges on selling the product. What are the challenges? Buying the product. Every single time. I have never seen a challenge on, hey, I'm going to do a contest. If you sell 50 pieces this week, Send me proof and you'll be entered in for a drawing because you sold 50 pieces. And it has to be pieces of your inventory that you've had for quite some time. I would love to see an actual narcissistic upline elite do something like that for them, their team. To encourage them to sell the inventory that they already have on hand. Instead of doing these contests, if you buy 20 pieces today, you get entered into a drawing. Thoughts? Okay. You looked like you wanted to say something. Oh, okay. And then um, back to this. She said, if this happens enough times, the victim stops trusting themselves and starts to rely upon the narcissist as the voice of reason. That's the other thing. They do this to break you down, to make you feel like um, they're the only ones that know what's right. They're the only ones that can guide you. And that you can't even trust your own thoughts. You can't even trust your own brain. And this is something that um, I didn't trust myself for a long time after making the bad decision into going into paparazzi. I felt like the ultimate failure. And I was like, I can't make a, a decision that's right. I felt like I was, I couldn't trust myself. Because right, you're like, I think I'm doing everything right. Why, why isn't it working? Yeah. I you're could tell you, well, that's because you're not doing it right. And you're like, well, point to where I'm doing it wrong. Yeah, well, I was told to uh, take out more Facebook ads. I should try to get a Google ad going. Um, I was told to um, join, oh, this is something someone sent me. I was told to join Facebook groups that I had interest in and then strike up conversations with other women in that Facebook group. Um... And then uh, try to build a real relationship and friendship off of that. Yeah, a real relationship where you instantly try to... Uh, where you instantly try to get them to join your team. And one of you was telling me about this too, and you said the same thing. So let me find this conversation. Just slide into their DMs and always be selling. All right, here, here it is. And, and yes, I was told to do this too, person who sent me this. Uh, let's see. We were advised by our uplines to go to groups with interests that we had and strike up conversations on posts or comments or, or comment back to someone and try to get a conversation started and then send a friend request. She did tell us not to be fake and to be ourselves and it just felt wrong because I knew the real reason behind it. It was what made me feel extremely dirty, if you will. I don't know where she got the idea or even if it was the thing she told us, especially knowing now what I know is where she gets most of her views and customers. 
This is probably how they do it. Yeah, well, I was told by my upline, who I'm pretty sure was told by Andrea Hutchinson, to do that. Okay, so... Right into people's DMs. You know, join Facebook groups. But here's the thing. If you, if you send a friend request to one person, they will accept it and say, this person sent me a friend request, and then you're flooded with friend requests. And then you're being DM'd by everybody who's a hungry little vulture. I'm sorry. That is why I took a break from Facebook for like a year and a half after I quit paparazzi is because of shit like that. Okay? All right, last part, uh, last two parts of this prayer. If it is, that's not my fault. So the other thing is they like to blame shift, okay? Um, if something bad happened, well, it's not my fault. It's your fault. I never told you to spend all your money on paparazzi jewelry. I just strongly encouraged it. But it's not my fault. You did it. I didn't twist your arm. I just encouraged it with contests. And telling you that you weren't good enough. And that you weren't working your business enough. But it's not my fault. Right? Right. And if it was my fault, well, I didn't mean it. Um, again, they don't hold themselves accountable for the things they do to the people in their downlines. They never will. And they will never apologize for it. And they'll never mean it if they do. And if they do mean it, it's because they themselves have been humbled, okay? And that was one of my thoughts that came into my brain while I was sitting in the doctor's office waiting for my, my mammogram today. I said to myself, I feel bad for people who have yet to be humbled. Be that financially, emotionally, or physically. True leaders are those who have been humbled. Um... These upline elites have yet to be humbled because they're still making money hand over fist from their downline. The rug hasn't been pulled out from underneath them, okay? They're making money off of their downline. Yeah, they're starting to feel a little bit of a twinge because they're losing people because they're going to makeup companies, like Courtney said in her little training that I watched on a video a couple days ago. Yeah, they're going to a company where they don't have to feel pressure to buy inventory Monday through Friday because it's always changing and there isn't a catalog. They don't have to inventory load. It's still an MLM. It's still an MLM, yeah, but they're not being encouraged to inventory load. Okay? And she was trying to demean what the person left paparazzi for. She was very uh, snake-in-the-grassy, being kind of, you know, the mean girl talking about it, being very passive aggressive in her comments about it. But here's the thing. She didn't mean it. Because what if she continues to lose more people in her downline to that makeup MLM or to that other MLM? It's going to happen. And it's because you're a terrible leader. Okay? And, you know, if you say mean things about somebody um, and it comes back to haunt you, all you can say is, um, I didn't mean it. But here's something that I love. An apology will only come if it benefits them in some way. Apologies are transactional to a narcissist, as everything is to a narcissist. What is something that is very transactional in paparazzi? It's the relationship. Your relationship with your upline is transactional. The minute you end that transaction, so does the relationship. It's evident everywhere. Okay? Narcissists cannot be seen as the bad guy. They cannot bear shame. That feeling of burning shame, the humiliation of it that healthy people learn to take on, unpleasant as though it is, is simply not something a nar narcissist can allow themselves to feel. They cannot feel shame. They cannot be made to feel shame. They cannot be made to feel like, hey, look, you're doing something wrong. You should be a little bit more ethical and moral. You should be a better leader. But instead, um, we get to the last part of the narcissist prayer. If I did it, you deserved it. They love to project, so what if I did it? You deserved it. They project and they blame shift. 
So they're talking shit about Courtney Kavaka right now. But she deserves it because she left paparazzi and took people with her. So we can talk shit about her all we want because she deserved it, right? Is that what I'm getting from this? I'm thinking so because this has been something that's been going on for a few weeks since she announced her departure. If transferring your feelings onto another person so that you don't have to feel them yourself, that's projection. If you are incorrectly accusing your feelings of someone doing something, and saying it's directly aimed at you. No, honey, it's not. It is not directly aimed at you. Somebody left to do something that was better for themselves. They didn't blame you, and they didn't say it was your fault. They made the decision on their own. But what is bothering you and all the other upline narcissists above you is that she decided to do something to make her situation better. And in turn, it made your situation worse. So you're going to blame her because that transaction ended and that transactional relationship, well, you're mad about it. Okay, but why are you blaming her for something that she chose to do for herself? She, she didn't ask for your permission. She didn't need to. And she didn't shame you into why she did this. She just made a decision to do something. So you f shining a false external image to keep yourself intact and to keep your team intact by discounting what she went off to do. Yes, it is another MLM and I don't agree with it, but by you dissing the other MLM, by you talking about the makeup MLM, it's going to make people curious and they're going to seek her out and they're going to find out more about it. By you talking about me and how mean I am to you is making people seek me out and find out more about me. Okay, by you playing the victim is bringing more people away from you because they see that I'm just talking to you and saying you could be a better leader. You could be better. You could start obeying the law. You could stop using your kid to sell jewelry. Okay, there are so many things that you could do to make your situation better. There are things that Rochelle Beachy could do to make her situation better. But again, I'm talking to the narcissistic parade of paparazzi right now. And I'm pretty sure if I said more things to Queen Misty herself, um, she would take it too personally too. Because narcissists stick together. And they're always trying to one-up each other. Why do I think you guys are all following suit and buying the rock band t-shirts and buying those stupid, ugly, smiley face earrings from Empower Me Pink to praise Queen Misty. That's why you guys are sick. And I think you all need some serious psychological help. And that's just me. So anyway, um, that's it for today. If you don't know what the Narcissist Prayer is, I'm going to put a link in the video description down below. Have fun reading it. And enjoy. Bye.